Hola, mi amigas and mi amigos. ¿Cómo está? Buenas tardes. Is everybody there? Wow, we have 44 people here already. Like at the very beginning. How to bend nature to your will. It starts Oops. with the batteries. Hang on. I thought I had my volume down. Make sure it's powerful. All right. You guys see me yet? I don't see me yet on my own screen. And I don't know why I'm dark. I have my ring light on. Something's happening. Hey. Hi, everyone. Good to see you. Hi, kitty cat. Hi, Amanda. And uh, SRS mom. Good to see you all. Let me see. How do I look? Am I dark? Oh, not that, not bad. I probably should have put a blanket back up here. Oh, you can see that RV over there <laughs> behind me. Yeah, it's weird. I've got my ring light on and I'm still, uh, I'm still kind of dark in here. That's weird. That's better. Hi, everyone. How you doing? I am so happy to be here. My very first live stream from Baja. Uh, we're kind of at our midway point in videos for our Baja adventure, so I thought it would be a really good time to do... Sorry, my, the lighting is driving me nuts. Yeah, it's kind of dark. I probably should have put a blanket up behind me, but I'm not going to do it now. I do have a tan. We've been spending a lot of time outside. It's been hot. So, yeah, I think I do have a tan. Let me pop out chat because I'm looking at myself and it's distracting me. So let me pop out chat. There we go. All right. And uh, hi, Carolyn. So I'm just going to take three minutes because I know this is the most boring part when people watch the live streams afterwards. So forward to 506 if you don't want to hear me say hello to everybody. But I feel like it's, you know, you guys all took the time to be here live. So I want to say hi to everybody here. Everybody is, I want to say hello to the people who are here live. So if you don't want to hear me do that. <laughs> and you're watching this in replay, go ahead and fast forward a few minutes. So let me just say hello to some people. Janine Billard. Hi. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Sandy. Hey, Paige Neary. It's good to see you. And Carolyn, it's good to see you. Hey, Cindy. Yeah, I heard that you guys had plans tonight. I'm surprised to see you. Have fun. Hi, Sally. Hi, Evelyn. Uh, hey, Joyce Basic. I'm glad that you're enjoying Baja. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> and uh, Lisa Kid, good to see you. Hey, Charlene. And Sandy, I'm sorry, Sandy Wenes. Wenz, uh, so excited to be a part of this. You found my channel about a week ago and you do some amazing vlogs. Why, thank you so much. I'm really enjoying uh, my new kind of longer format, more immersive style vlogs. Uh, I got to tell you that, anyway, there's my channel has evolved over the years and I'm continuing look, I'm con I continually look for ways to make my videos relevant and interesting. And I feel like I have kind of at this point in time found a perfect mix of what makes me happy and what makes you happy. I love making the type of videos I've been, the Sunday night videos that I've been making. Uh, you know, you might've noticed, I think I've mentioned this to patrons. Now that I'm doing 50 minute, 60 minute Sunday night videos, I only have time to do one video a week. I can't even think about doing a Thursday video anymore. That's why I thought the Thursday uh, live stream would be nice because I haven't done anything on Thursdays in a while. But, uh, you know, the, I had gotten to a point where I could do Sunday videos in a day or two, but they weren't as creative as what I'm able to do now that I have more time. So I'm literally spending four or five days on my Sunday night videos. I love the creativity. I love, I love what I'm doing right now. Uh, it's a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot of producing and editing, but I'm really enjoying it. And I'm thrilled because the views are high. I don't know if it's just because I'm in Baja right now, but actually... That video, how many of you saw the video, The Rainstorm in Louisiana? That's what started this whole thing. That video is an hour long and it's got like 130,000 views. I don't think I've ever had a travel video do 130,000 views. So that's kind of what started this whole theme toward longer, more immersive videos. Did you guys see that, that Louisiana video? It, it I don't, literally, I don't think I've ever had a travel video do 100,000 views. And now it's... Um, 
I'm getting a lot, a lot of views. 60, 80, $50,000, $50,000, 50,000 views. I wish. <laughs> I was getting $50,000 a, a month on videos. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Katrina, thank you for the super chat. That really means a lot to me. So in case you don't know, there's a dollar sign at the bottom of the screen. And if you want your comment to stand out, because it looks like we've got a lot of people here. We have 158 people here already. 64 thumbs up. If you want your comment or question to stand out or you just want to tip me uh, for the work that I put into my videos, there's a dollar sign below and you can do that through a super chat. And it is really appreciated. It goes a long way toward helping me keep doing YouTube as a full-time job and being able to bring you free content every week. So thank you, Katrina. All right. Hello, Natasha from Minnesota. Um, Connie loves the trips and videos and wants to do RV life. What's stopping you, Connie? What's stopping you? Uh, hi, Cynthia. Good to see you. Kimberly. Hi, Lucille. Hi, Carolyn Freebird. That Louisiana vote was a great one. Thank you. I mean, I couldn't, I was shocked that that video did as well as it did. Because like I said, I've never had a travel video do that well. Hey, Jane, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. What is it? Keep it up. Thank you. I will. As long as you guys keep watching <laughs> and I can keep making this a sustainable job, I will continue to, um, I'll keep doing it because I enjoy it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Kitty Cat Network. I'm glad you like the videos and the live streams. It's good to see you all here. So Barbara wants to know how my rig is holding up. Knock on wood, this rig, man. Boy, the story she could tell. <laughs> uh, she's running great. I think, you know, I still have that grinding noise, which for the last year, people have been telling me is my transmission. Uh, so it's still doing the grinding thing. I'm convinced it's either a drivetrain, um, drivetrain, what's the word I'm looking for? Drivetrain issue. Uh, what's, ro not rotor axle. I, I think it's like an axle bearing or a wheel bearing. So I'm looking forward to getting back to the States and um, my front brakes are going to need to be done pretty soon and tires. So I'm going to have everybody, I'm almost positive that's what it is at this point. I can really hear it when I'm going slower, which in Mexico, I don't, have we ever driven over 65 miles an hour in Mexico? Oh, Terry, thank you for the gas money. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I watch another guy on YouTube and that's what he, when he, when he says, you know, hit the super chat, he's like, it's for gas money. Um, you know, and I guess I, I don't know. I don't look at it that way. You pay it's for video. But anyway, I shouldn't have said that. Thank you. I'll take whatever you want to give me. <laughs> gas money, Sadie treats. I'll take it. It all goes toward making this a sustainable job. But yeah, my RV is doing well. Um, so let me also address the elephant in the room. Yeah, my windshield is cracked. I know. I know. I know. I mean, 45 people don't need to tell me my windshield is cracked. Every video. Not quite every video. But uh, I had hoped drive shaft. Yes. Yes, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Yeah, 55 on a good day. So we go, oh, let me finish one story before I go into another. So at, at speeds like below like 45, between like 10 and 45, I hear the, it what sounds like a grinding or something. I think it's a wheel bearing, to be honest. I hear it way worse. If I'm going over 50, 60, if I'm on the freeway, I barely hear it. And we've been doing no driving over 65 here. So I hear it constantly. And uh, so that's why I, I'm, I, I'm able to hear it all the time. And so um, I'm doing some more research. And I do think it's like the drive shaft or something. So hopefully we'll get that. Annette, thank you for the super chat. Love my hippie spirit as you're a relic, an old hippie far out man. I love, uh, oh, an old hippie far out man. I love that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, uh, I was born in the hippie era and I definitely think that I, some of that is in my, I was born the summer of love. The summer of love, I was born. Uh, so I really think that I have some of that in my DNA and I really do that some of that seeped into me, you know, the Gloria Steinem years and uh, the, <laughs> I, of course I went for Gloria Steinem, so many other <laughs> hippies, but I don't know why I pulled Gloria Steinem out. Anyway, you know what I mean. 
Um, hi, Connie from New Mexico. I'm a flower child. Yes. Just turn up the radio and it will <laughs> and it will fix. Unfortunately, there are no radio stations in Mexico. Zero. Big fast zero. I've tried AM and FM and my CD player works sometimes. Sometimes. So uh, I try to download podcasts or something on my phone to listen to when I drive. But we haven't really been driving all that long. I know. It's Richard. Hi, Richard. So I guess they think I didn't see the crack or people are just dying to know when I'm going to get, why haven't I gotten it fixed? It's dangerous. It's so dangerous. Everything I do is so dangerous. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, I planned on getting it fixed in El Centro before we left, but, and I've said this before, I, I, uh, yeah. We were planning, I was planning on being in El Centro for at least a week to take care of business before we crossed the border. But then I had a work thing come up that I, I, I got a work opportunity that I could not refuse. Remember that solar awning? I could not refuse <laughs> that work opportunity. Let me tell you, uh, I could not refuse it. So I ended up staying in Quartzsite instead of coming to Centro to take care of business. So to take care of stuff. I mean, I got all the necessary stuff and I'm like, I, I can't get a windshield replaced in Mexico. I mean, we can't even find oat milk, right, Sarah and Aaron? <laughs> Much less a windshield. So yes, I will get it fixed. Yes. So you can put your mind at ease. Bam Bam Pebbles and Sandra K. Thank you for the super chat. More videos and maybe some fish tacos. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Love your point of view. You make me go, hmm, which is a good thing. That is like the biggest compliment anyone can pay me. Thank you. I love that. I I love that. Because sometimes I do like to poke the pot. Just just even just to poke the pot, just, just to get people thinking. So that really means a lot that you said that and that you're getting that from my, uh, from my video. So thank you, Sandra and Lucille. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. Lucille, this is your very first super chat ever on a live stream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, Sally. I think I've said that to people. Sally's like, you want me to replace the windshield? Send me money in time. Yeah. Somebody literally told me that I should not be in Mexico. I should go somewhere else. And that's what I wanted to say. Are you going to pay for it? I mean, money in time. People seem to think that I just have nothing to do all day. <laughs> That I just sit around picking my nose all day. That I've got absolutely nothing to do. That I don't have a job. <laughs> That I don't travel full time every few days, especially here in Baja. But, oh, thank you, Jay. I hope this will help with some of your needs. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It will. Some of my cost of business too. There's a lot. There's a lot that goes into uh, cost of business. I actually need a new laptop. I finally decided. I. <laughs> oh, you should see my laptop, Sarah, Aaron, Sarah, Ralph. I guess I could show you. You should see. Actually, here. You want to see how bad my laptop is? Let me see. Look at how disgusting. Do you see all the broken keys on my laptop? Look at. Is that disgusting or what? Look at. <laughs> my N broke. My N. N-A. -N -N and uh, I was asking Sarah and Ralph if they had any recommendations for how to fix it. I ended up putting two big pieces of tape on it. And Ralph, I brought my laptop out and Ralph literally went, oh my. <laughs> It's a mess, but this thing has lasted me a long time and um, I'm going to buy a new Alienware because I love this so much. So, yay. So, all right. So I went way past. Well, I didn't go way past the hellos. I asked a couple questions. Yeah. Deborah says the wheel bearings can lock up. I know. And I'm really worried about that. I would have thought like all the people who drove my rig and. I mean, I can't imagine it's wheel bearings. I've had brakes and shocks. I, it's weird, but we'll see. But yes, that is a concern for me that they might lock up. All right. 
I have, um, I'd love to answer your questions about Baja. Anything you want to know, there's a, also a couple things I want to talk about. The reason I called, the reason I titled this live stream is, um, what did I call it? Like, is it real or not? I can't even remember what I called it now. What did I call it? Is this real Mexico and what's real and what's not? A big reason that I decided to go with that title is because I continue to see comments from lots and lots and lots of people who express opinions and or concerns about being in Mexico, Baja, that are completely contrary to what I have been showing. Thank you, Janine, for the for the super chat. Aw, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Sadie's here sleeping next to me. She had a long day of digging already. Oh, Aaron, thank you so much for the super chat. Do I think a certified mobile tech, hang on, let me look, that travels, I think I know the question and I'm going to say yes. Do you think a certified mobile RV tech that travels is a viable second career, especially in AHA? Yes, 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 yes. I think here's two things about that. Actually, I just met a woman uh, who is doing that. So it is starting to catch on. So start now and yes in Baja absolutely a thousand percent here's the other thing what I have found is that oh no they're mm, mobile RV like they either do the engine or the coach you know what I'm saying like they can either work on your changing your oil or your brakes or whatever or they can replace your refrigerator or troubleshoot your batteries I think both are needed, and I feel like there are more engine mobile mechanics than there are house mobile mechanics, I think. So uh, I, I think both are desperately needed, and I think that is a brilliant second career. I think you can do really well if you know how to market and advertise, which is what I do, by the way. All right. Um, so yes, I think that's a great idea, and thank you for the super chat, and thanks for the question. Um. So, okay, so back to my, my, why I called this, uh, why I gave this live stream the title I did is because it, it's just amazing to me that no matter how much we show about the reality of life here, and we've been here, should I tell you, are people going to freak out because we're a little behind because I'm a little behind on videos. We've been here almost two months, two months. We've been living in Baja all over Baja. And I'm going to also talk about how our impressions, I keep saying our, and I should only speak for myself. I'm going to talk a little bit about how my impressions have changed from when we first got here. And based on my experience as somebody who just got here versus some impressions that I have now, some things have changed. Um, you, I'm not going to lie. I came into Baja my first week and, and, and a viewer called me out on this. I don't, she said I romanticized it. I'm still, the light's still bothering me. Sorry. I don't know that I necessarily romanticized um, Baja, but my experience in the first couple of weeks was based on my being here a couple of weeks. I've got different experiences now that I've been here a little longer, and I want to talk about some of those. They're also going to come out in video, but we're live, so I'll talk about them. But I definitely think that the reality, and even traveling through the southern United States and all through Texas and riding, literally riding the border through half of Texas and people like, you got to be careful. There's millions of criminals trying to cross the border and climb the wall. And I was like, really? I never saw one. And people don't want to believe it. And I feel like the same is true of our experience in Baja. No matter how much we show of people smiling and people photobombing. You know, I remember the guy in the grocery store in, in San Felipe kind of photobombing our shots and saying hi and smiling. And uh, no matter how much goodness we show and no matter how much we show that the streets are not lined with armies of people dying to get across the U.S., people don't want to believe it. People would rather believe what their corporate news is showing them than what Sarah and Aaron and I are showing them. And 
I, I don't understand that. Why anyone would think I have an ulterior motive other than to honestly share my experience. I have, I'm not a multi-million dollar corporation. I have no stock holders to please for advertising. I don't care really. I mean, if one or two people decides they don't want to watch me, okay. I mean, just look at my comments this week. I'm kind of like zero fucks this week. <laughs> I, I, I'm, people are like, you're cranky since you've been in Mexico. Well, I'm cranky because people just are not nice. And they're just, I'm kind of tired of all of the ignorance and all the shaming and all the blaming and all the telling us we're naive and telling us that we're stupid while we're here living it, living it, talking to the people, driving the roads, meeting people, and they're getting all their information from news who has ulterior motives. So that's kind of why I named the video the way I did. I know Cynthia M., if you're here, you got a little worked up over it, um, you know, and it was a little hookish. I'm not going to call it clickbait because I don't think it's clickbait, but it, it did definitely had a hook for a certain end. I wanted people to Watch this. So to he I want to I want people to hear this. Remember what somebody said earlier? I want to get people thinking. And I think a lot of my channel and a lot of the topics that I bring up is to get people thinking. Um, to maybe change a few minds and to maybe open a few minds. So that that's what the title of this video is about. Nobody has I don't think explicitly said I'm faking this, which is amazing. If you think about it, because people accuse me of faking everything. Um, I don't think anybody has accused me. I've been accused of romanticizing, of maybe not showing the the enough of the dirty whatever, blah, blah, blah. But overall, I have not gotten a lot of people like just being like thinking that I'm faking this. I think it's kind of hard to fake with a group of people. <laughs> We're all in it together and we're the best secret keepers on the planet. So real life is boring. <laughs> exactly. Tracy, that is it's exactly right. It's and and this this sensationalism is what sells. Sensationalism is what gets clicks. And I'm gonna I'm gonna own this. I use sensationalized rhetoric in my titles and my videos sometimes like the cartel thumbnail i use that sometimes because i give people what they want in the thumbnail and draw them in to give them what they don't expect so when you see me using things like that just know that i'm very mindful about what i'm doing and i do it because i people are going to be like cartel oh my god oh my god cartel they got in trouble didn't they and then I want to pull them in with that fear they have and address that fear and say, there's really nothing to be afraid of. Some people are going to double down. I've had a couple people double down and still say I'm naive and I'm an idiot and I'm just lucky and time is going to get me. They're going to get me. And that's fine. They can believe that. And uh, some minds just can't be changed no matter how much evidence you give them. So, all right. Um... Wow, I have super chats. Dana, I choose to believe the best in people and that's usually what comes back at me. Yes. You know, I, and that's a really good point. And I've said this before. Everything I have been through in my life, I have been hurt in unspeakable ways by the people who were supposed to love me, um, by all kinds of people. I have just been hurt. You know, yeah, people who were supposed to love me, I've been stomped on and hurt, you know, you know my story in very horrible ways. And people who are supposed to love me continue to just, um, okay, no, I don't want to say that. Wait, can I edit that out? <laughs> I've been hurt. Let's just say that. And I still choose. It's not even a choice. It's something inherent in me. I still believe that people are good. I still believe that people in, are inherently good and that people don't want to harm me. And I, I, I think maybe that's the difference between someone who is able to live this way as, alone for as long as I have um, and take risks and go out into the world and experience these th all the things I've experienced versus someone who can't. And I think you're right. I think that when you expect the best in people, and I'm talking about
about strangers, which is really interesting. That's a whole other thing. But uh, when you expect the best in people, I do believe that's what you get back. I also think here, Dana, let's see if you can, if you, if you can relate to this. I also think those who believe in the best in people are the best people. The people who believe that people are the, are good are good people. It's the other ones, the bad people. Everybody's out to get me. Everybody's bad. Blah, 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 right? The worst people think everybody else is bad, while the best people think everybody is good. What do you think about that? Everybody and Dana. Did I miss another super chat before Dana? Victoria. Oh, thank you. I got that. Thank you again, Victoria. And we have, oh, Bam Bam again. Oh, wait. What our politicians try to push on us for political gain, Governor Abbott is the worst. Yeah, we've got several uh, worst, but, and, and it is, and it's, it's interesting. It's not, it's the politicians. I do believe there's, there's some truth to that, that we've had a lot of com campfire conversations in camp about this and about the differences between the United States and Mexico and Mexico. And our government is literally invested in keeping us afraid of the other you know, the brown, the black, the Muslims, the Mexicans, the asylum seekers, they're literally invested in keeping us afraid. Here is what I think since traveling here. And I think I may have said this in a video. The people here seem happy. Smiles, laughs. I mean, it, it's weird. They definitely don't have the political tension here. At least I haven't felt it. Um, that I feel in the United States. They also have fewer rules, it seems. We haven't seen a car seat since we've been here. Kids are hanging out every window. Trucks, pickup trucks, people hanging off the back of the pickup truck, kids hanging off the back of the pickup truck. I mean, they have seatbelt laws here. I don't know if people use them or not. It just seems a, to be... And maybe it is because of all the corruption at the top and the lack of interest in the people here, but there seems to be less, people definitely aren't as uptight here as they are in the U.S. Like I said in, in the last couple of posts, you know, yeah, Sadie went in a Catholic church. Oh my fucking God. You would have thought that I shit on the altar. <laughs> I mean... I just couldn't believe the reaction. I mean, it wasn't a ton of people, but the people who did react, it was a very big reaction. And in Mexico, the dogs wander in and out of the restaurant. Sadie has been in kitchens. <laughs> I can't tell you how many restaurants we Sadie wanders into the kitchen. And I always ask because dogs aren't on leashes here. And when she, you know, and especially like the street cafes, if she goes in the back, I'm like, esta bien, ella bien, you know, I'll take her. And they're like, no, 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 she's fine. They love her. They love the dogs here. And I was telling Sarah this morning, it's a much less human centric society. The U.S. is all about me, me, me. Put your dog on a leash because I don't like it. Do this because me, 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 me. Go. Uh, we want to, I don't know, all the animals that we eat and that, that are mistreated in the process to becoming food. It's all about, it's all human centric. It's all about me. The human controls everything and fuck everybody else and fuck everything else. Like Sadie, Sarah was saying this morning, it's like Sadie isn't even a living being. Like she's a thing to some people. She's not a thing. She's not something that should be caged. She wasn't born to be on a leash. And yet Americans just lose their shit over her freedom. It's interesting. But nobody in Mexico cares. Dogs run free and wild all over the place here. In restaurants, in churches, in the streets. And people just, they don't get mad. They just weave around them or honk their horn. <laughs> I think Americans can learn a lot from Mexico and Mexican people. And I have to wonder if that's part of why our government is so invested in keeping other people out. If we isolate Americans, 
then we can continue to tell Americans that we have the best country on the planet, that we have the most freedom of any country on the planet. If we don't talk to anybody on the outside, and I don't know what percentage of Americans have passports. Does anybody know what percentage of Americans travel? But I think it's pretty low. And it's always the people who don't travel who have the most fears about other places in other countries and the most misconceptions about America. Does that make sense? What do you guys think? Did any of that resonate? So that is one of the biggest things that um, I have... There's a lot of big things I have gotten from this trip to Mexico. So I've traveled a lot. You know, I've been to 10 countries alone. This is the longest I've ever been abroad. And uh, it's really, especially coming to a place like Mexico, you know, a so-called third world country, which, by the way, we don't say that anymore. It's a, a developing country, I think is what we call it now. And uh, spending so much time here because at, at the time when there is so much hysteria, that is fake, by the way. This fake, this border crisis is fake. It's a political weapon to use to distract everybody from the good things that Biden has done. So uh, I don't want to get too political. It's probably too late. <laughs> but there is no border crisis. There are really desperate people who are trying, who are literally sacrificing everything and most of them are from south america central america not not a, they're not all mexicans and actually i just did this research to combat a comment guess what the number one country is that we are getting immigrants from the number one country we're getting immigrants does anybody know the biggest country that sends that that we're getting immigrants from guess guess China. Um, I did. No, 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 no. India. Do you ever hear about the India crisis? <laughs> India. I think China might have been on that list, too. Iowa. <laughs> Seriously, Texas. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> Alabama. No, India. India. The most immigrants that come into this country, and I don't remember the exact statistic, but it was India. Mm -hmm. And China's up there too. So we're getting most of our immigrants, not even from the, the, southern, the southern continents. And yet we have, so you question, question everything. So yeah. India. Yeah, look it up. I'm pretty sure it was India. So Cynthia M uh, agrees that people should travel to other places and learn about other people and their culture. You know, it breaks my heart being here, how friendly they are to us. It's almost heartbreaking. I mean, you, I don't know how much access they have to news here. I don't know how much they know about, they've got to know. I mean, the, the population here is not very educated. What did I read? 60%, uh, I think it was 60% of Mexicans graduate high school or don't graduate. It, it, anyway, the numbers were alarming. So that it's not a very educated population. We did meet a, a wonderful, one of our wonderful waiters um, in a place that you're going to see soon. Uh, just graduated law school, and uh, that was and his, his, the guy who hired him was just so proud, a native Mexican, um, and actually he was learning English uh, as he waited tables. But the um, yeah, so the population here is not very educated. I don't know how much access they have to news, but I but I I I can't believe they don't have an inkling about what's going on in America. Of course. They're also not experiencing those Americans. They're experiencing the Americans who do come down here and for the most part respect them and their culture. Um, but it's still just kind of, it, it breaks my heart that they're so friendly and so kind and so 
generous and giving and uh just i don't know and happy they 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 smile and party it's just kind of amazing i have issue with anyone crossing any borders i have issue with people who don't know how to spell border <laughs> but we should be checking anyone who comes into our country when the elite get the wall the borders should get done oh my goodness so B-O-A-R-D-R-S is a different kind of border. The border is B-O-R-D-E-R. -E and no one is coming into our country without being checked. Check your facts. And I'm sorry, that was that was not nice. Me correcting your spelling. That was not nice. No excuse. Um but your information is inaccurate. No one is coming across the border freely. No one, period. So, um, I know I didn't think I'd get into a whole conversation about, about immigration and the border, but, uh, you know, how can I not <laughs> living, living in Mexico for the last two months and, uh, and experiencing this. And it, it's just, it's heartbreaking. It's, oh, like I was saying earlier, uh, and I got sidetracked by the largest, largest country of immigrants. Can you imagine? And, and unfortunately, if things go as poorly as I'm afraid they might in the next election, we might get a feel for what it's like to want to risk everything to leave your country for a better life. And I, I don't understand hating another human being so much be simply because they want to escape the horrific conditions, death and murder and uh, drugs and poverty and no clean, no food or drinking water or jobs. How can we turn away? Even if it is they're either trying to, I don't know. I, I'm a bleeding heart liberal. I don't know why can't we can't just help people. Why? Why do we? Why can't we help people? Uh, they're starving. They risk everything. They literally risk everything for a better life for their families. And we're up here in up in arms about wanting to limit or turn them away or make sure they cross all their uh, T's and dot all their I's before they come into my country and get my stuff. They can't have my stuff. It's disgusting. All right. I'm going to get off. <laughs> you guys, oh, you guys are very nice. I feel like I just went on a little bit of a rant. I totally did not mean to go on, but um, I see that I've got a, um, uh, I feel, I look, I got, I've got a lot of uh, like-minded people here. So um, thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts on, on these subjects because we've all had a lot of conversations about this and, you know, you, you come here and you just can't help but feel bad for the state of the world. Oh, thank you, Karen. Oh, thank you, Randy. Wow. Thank you, FLM and eyes wide open. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Love my rants. Rant away. <laughs> Preach, Carolyn. Oh, my goodness. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. We're living in a crazy world. We're living in a crazy world, and it's just hard to see so many people buy into the propaganda uh, and the fear-mongering. And um, I see it in my comments every day. Every day I see the fear-mongering. And it's heartbreaking to be here immersed in a society of these wonderful people and to see the ugliness on the other side, literally on the other side of the border through the computer. Um, it's a lot. All right, let's change. Let's, would we like to change subjects? All right. Thank you, Mary McPherson. I appreciate that. All right. So I got a couple questions. I'm going to go ahead and answer a couple questions and switch gears. So, um, to 
Tolo reading. And I don't think that's what it was. The first question, want to know if I'm planning on exploring mainland Mexico. I think it was a she said she'd love to see the process of taking the ferry. We, I have no plans right now for mainland Mexico. It is absolutely something after this experience I would like to do. I still would love to do uh, Mexico Central and South America. And <laughs> that would be fun doing it on video boy uh it's i would love to do it but it's not something that i plan on doing right now so we, we've got some videos coming up that show driving in these tiny towns and they're i mean it's insane these streets are like this big <laughs> and when we were thinking about going to mexico mainland mexico we were we were all planning on getting vans for that reason, because we would be extremely limited as to what we could do trying to drive the streets in an RV. I think we had a tiny, tiny taste of it here in Baja. It would be exponentially worse trying to drive an RV in mainland Mexico. So if I ever do, or when I do decide to do mainland Mexico, Central and South America, which is definitely bucket list for me. It would, I would have to have a van. I can't do it in this. And, uh, that, that's a lot. When we were first talking about it a couple years ago, I was like, ah, we'll just buy cheap vans and we'll put a bed in them, <laughs> you know, in a, in a, in a cooler and we're going to go. And then I'm like, I don't even think I told Sarah and Aaron this and I'm laying in bed, you know, we're like a year from going or six months from going. And I'm like, but how am I going to work? I'm going to need solar. And if I get solar, I'm going to need an inverter. And, a, uh, and then I'm going to need a controller. And where am I going to put my batteries? Can I do it with a Blue Eddy? And, like, you know, so logistically, there would be some stuff to work out. And trying to build out a van on top of working a full-time job and traveling. And, uh, you know, this lifestyle makes everything a little more challenging to do. But th that might be something in the future, but definitely not something I want to do right now. Uh, Solze, Jules, getting an RV and tra uh, you're trading your RV and getting a van for traveling. It'll be cheaper and easier. Absolutely. And I've said a million times over the um, eight years, eight years I've been living in an RV, eight years. I'm in my ninth year of living in an RV. No, April 1st will be a full eight years. But uh, I wish I could be a van person, but I can't. I can't live in a van, at least not while I'm working. I spend too much time inside and I need the windows and everything. A van would be kind of claustrophobic for me, but, um, uh, oh, Cabo is hard to drive through. Interesting. <laughs> ah, so we're not going to Cabo this year. We, uh, we've already turned around. I think I can say that. In fact, I think next Sunday's video will be the end of my, our Southern, uh, maybe, maybe not. Depends on how far I get on the video. I just started working on it. I started working on it on Monday and I'm still like, I have no idea where the video is going. So I can't believe today's Thursday. Um, yeah, so we didn't make it to Cabo, but we, we plan on coming back next year. We, things kind of got away from us this year when we were first talking about doing Baja, I don't, I think my trip back east kind of stalled everything a little bit. Uh, I didn't plan on going back. Oh, that's right. My mother got ripped off. I did not plan on going back east last year. And we were going to spend more months in Baja than we than we did this time. So by the time we talked about an, a day to cross the border into Mexico, Edie and Cindy had plans and and passport issues so they only had a month so they they've been gone a few weeks now ralph had another um a thing going on for with a friend he had another commitment so he's gone already so next year we're going to try to get down here earlier and spend more time down here and the first month or so uh, we were down here we traveled a lot faster than we really would have wanted to so we didn't get to see things and spend, you know, Sarah and I work and Aaron work. They've got videos, they have jobs. I mean, they have a lot going on. I have this full-time job, so we can't travel like someone who doesn't have jobs. And, and we'd like to come back and take our time a little bit more next year and probably get down to Cabo. So next year. Um,
I know. Well, I know. I knew the gas was going to be expensive. I, but I, honestly, Sarah, though, so I knew the gas was going to be super high here. It's high everywhere because they go by the liter and it's higher everywhere. Um, but it's not cheap here. It is not cheap here at all. I mean, eating out, like, I don't know, we had the most amazing fish and shrimp tacos, the best fish and shrimp tacos yesterday. And they were, but they, they're like five bucks a piece. Things are not that cheap here. Thank you, Elizabeth, for the gas money. Your 24% Aztec. Oh, wow. Wish I could see my ancestors. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I really appreciate the super chat. It means a lot to me. And I hope you are, you do get to go see your ancestors. Hi, Mark Parr. It's good to see you. Does Sadie have a routine? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She keeps me up all night being on guard for anything that moves. <laughs> so seriously, though, we get up in the morning and uh, she waits by the door while I make my first cup of coffee and we go outside and we go for a walk. And uh, depending on the morning and the weather, we, we're usually gone for an hour. We're outside in the morning for at least an hour walking. And uh, sometimes we play. Depends on where we are. It depends on what's going on. It depends on my work day, how much work I have to do. Uh, this morning, I came back from my walk and talked to Aaron and Sarah for a while. So Sadie went off digging a hole, chasing critters. And then I work for a few hours. And then we go outside again for a couple breaks, a couple small walks. I try. I haven't been playing with her as much as she likes. You know, like I usually try to run her toward the end of the day, play ball, play frisbee we're on a road let's see if it's mario <laughs> um that story's coming soon you know yeah i try to play ball with her uh just to run her out a little bit at night um and then we usually come in depending on the time of year we, we're in by six or seven and then we don't go out again in the morning until like eight that's our routine um I know the bioluminescent tide was amazing. All right. I have another Mario. <laughs> oh, hi. You're in Israel. Why am I awake? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry about everything that's happening in that part, in your part of the world. I'm sorry about all the tragic loss and war and senseless death. And I'm glad you're here. I hope it sounds like you might be doing well. All right. I'm going to, um, Jane Ely wants to know, ha has my Spanish improved by being immersed in the culture? <laughs> Sarah. So, well, I ordered lunch completely in Spanish yesterday. Uno taco marisco, actually with Sarah's help, and uno taco marisco, por favor, y un topo chico, por favor. <laughs> so it is getting better. Comprehension is getting better. I'm starting to understand what people are talking, saying to me a little bit easier. Not a lot, not as much as you would think. It's really, really, really hard. You know words, I know words, I know phrases, but when somebody is in front of me, it all goes out the window and word salad comes out of my mouth. It's, it, and again, I have a whole new respect for immigrants who come to our country and try to learn our language. It's freaking hard, you know, and, and like I said, like there are things I, I know how to say, but when somebody asks me a question or I'm or there and I'm right there, it just goes out the window. The, the best part of being immersed in a culture is like certain things, like, especially going out to restaurants a lot, certain things become routine. Like you always know they're going to ask flour or corn tortillas, red or green salsa, rojo or, or rojo or, ve or verde. So those things be, become routine. And so ordering in the restaurants, because we've been eating out so much, is like pr probably the easiest thing for us to do right now. But there are things like, uh, um, I'm trying to think like, things I would like to be able to do, but I just can't try to have a conversation with someone to be able to get what I want or get what I need. You know what I'm saying? So I'm hoping we can... I'm hoping I can take more Babel because I, I am learning through doing Babel lessons. I was. So I'm hoping to get better and be better next year. Uh, 
you know, because we spent a couple months here this year, hopefully it'll be a little easier and a little bit better next year. Tracy Trotter says she's so bad with languages. I took a fluent friend with me and we were well respected and shown good times. It, I'm me same here. I, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this story. So I took two years of Spanish in community college in San Francisco, San Francisco community college. And I was also living in the mission district in San Francisco, which was mostly uh, Latin, Latino, Latina. And, um, I worked at a restaurant where we had cooks and dishwashers who spoke Spanish and native Spanish speakers. So I got to practice a lot and I learned uh, enough, you know, I learned quite a bit. I also dated a couple guys who spoke Spanish. So I, I learned, I learned some, but then when I got to Berkeley, my major being focused on Russia, I had to take Russian and that completely screwed me up trying to I was barely learning Spanish and then to shift and try to learn Russian was, which is an extremely difficult language. <laughs> I don't think I've ever shared this before. I had a TA who, if a Russian who was like my age, maybe a year older than me, like on my, my second year, he was my TA throughout my second year of Russian. I, I kept going to his office hours. Like I need help. Cause from day one, you speak Russian in class. It was so hard. And, uh, and I was really struggling and I, 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 always be at his office hours trying to like, what can I do? How can I learn this language? And he looked at me seriously one day and he was like, Carolyn, have you ever considered you might have a learning disability? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm 29 years old. This brain isn't made for learning languages like these 20 year olds, you know, but, um, I, yeah, I almost didn't graduate Berkeley because of Russian. I was down to the final. I was afraid I wasn't going to pass Russian and I needed Russian for my major to find, to, to graduate. I ended up with a C. So yeah, I was, I'm the same way. You took Russian too, Solze? Yeah. Uh, Gavriche Paruski, Solze. <laughs> Me? No, no, uh, niet. <laughs> niet gavr, gavr you. Paruski. That's all I remember. And Midomie. Midomie. All right. The, you know, the alphabet is actually the easiest thing to learn. You learn that the first week. It really is. But then they conjugate. You know how like in Spanish, they conjugate verbs. I think it's verbs. In Russian, they conjugate everything. Nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives. They conjugate everything. Thing. So like trying to speak a sentence, it's ridiculous. It's so hard. <laughs> Solze, you remember? You remember trying to conjugate everything? It was so hard. All right. I'm flower. Don says I'm flower and green kind of guy. I'm corn and rojo. Usually ro maize, maize rojo salsa. So the salsa here is very different. Um, so yeah, let me tell you about the things that are very different here than they are in the U.S. The salsa, they don't have, like, we're used to, like, motorcycles. We're used to, like, this tomato-y, usually kind of chunky, milder, you can get milder, hotter, medium salsa. Here, it's just like a hot sauce. It's, it's not thick. It's just like a sauce. And it's usually very hot. Like if you ask for salsa, that's what you get. You get this super red, like not something you can just dip your chips in and eat. Mm -mm, it's too hot for that. It's interesting. The other thing that's very different here are burritos. So <laughs> at home, you get burritos and they're these giant things. Here, they're like this big. And the burrito I had was eggs and it was just eggs and bean and cheese. That's it. It's like this big. And every burrito we've had has been like this <laughs> Mario. <laughs> Ghost. Who's Ghost Rider? How do you know who Mario is? Um, there's not a lot of Pico here either. I feel like we haven't been able. A couple times I feel like we asked for Pico and they, they didn't. Oh, I'm thinking of the place in Bahia. They didn't have Pico or Salsa. So um, Ghost Rider. <laughs> it catches on fast. Hi, Arlene. Good to see you. 
You can count to 10 in Russian? Oh my God. I, I can't. I don't even remember how to count in Russian. That was traumatizing. Um, all right. I know. <laughs> I've done that too. Um, I just smile and say yes when I have no idea what people are saying. It sometimes gets me into trouble. We do that a lot. I've done that a lot here. It's like, hola, hola, como esta, bien y tu, oh, you know, bien y tu, or like you're ordering in a restaurant and you're like, si, maiz, por favor, and then they're like, I'm like, mm-hmm. It's like, it's so hard. They're so patient though. They really, they just appreciate the effort. They really do. Um, and interesting, we've had no bad bad meals here. Uh, every place has been really good, except one. You want to hear about the one bad meal we had here? A little town. Oh, my God. And even, that's the thing, other thing about Mexico that I really love. They don't seem to have a whole lot of, like, zoning. There's no, I don't think there's anything, any such thing as zoning here. So people live in whatever they can afford, whatever they can build. They live in shacks. You know, we're... We're, uh, we, we were at the Pacific Ocean and literally on the hill, people are living in shacks. It looked like they had electricity, but they're living in shacks above the freaking Pacific Ocean. It was beautiful. So they don't seem to have the whole NIMBY, not in my backyard, the whole uptight, like you're, you're ruining my property values. People live in what they can afford. So they don't have any homeless. There's no homeless here because people can live in whatever they want to live in. And at least none that we have seen. And, um, they also seem to be able to set up shop and sell food or open a tire shop or sell wares on the street pretty easily. And that's what I have found really kind of cool about this culture is that the government isn't providing jobs for them because it's so corrupt, because it's probably run by the cartel. So they're finding ways to support themselves. They're, they put up a... a, a a, a roof and put a pic couple picnic tables outside their house and make the best fish tacos you've ever had that they probably get from the fishermen who just went by your camp that morning and went out to catch fish. True story. Yesterday. I mean, the fish was amazing yesterday. I don't know what we ate, but it was so good. And I want to go back. It was the best fish tacos since I've been here. Uh, and, and that's really cool. And those are some of the best meals I've had, like just a little shack. It's on somebody's house or a little, um, cabana what are those things called palapa that meal i know it was so good it was so good uh like the simplest meal we've had that's the other thing a lot of places like taco is a, <laughs> a taco here is literally a tortilla with whatever protein you know fish or shrimp for me and uh sarah and aaron have been surprised that all the pretty much almost every fish taco we've had has been breaded and fried instead of fresh in the shrimp too uh, but then yesterday they also brought for the table a whole tray of limes and cabbage and cucumbers and onions and um, guac uh, avocado so you can make your own taco. It was really, really, really good. But yeah, get rid of the lawyers. There's, you know, and again, I think a lot of it is probably the product of the corrupt system here that, you know, that they don't give a shit. They, I mean, they're all like making their money at the top. All of the oligarchs and whoever owns the, the politicians, they're making their money. Um, and so the people just kind of fend for themselves. And it seems from an outsider's point, it seems nobody bothers them. You know, they just set up shop and find a way to make a living. And they seem happy, simple. Not a lot. They don't have a lot, but they seem happy with what they have, you know, in their little kitchen. I looked in the little kitchen. It's a little stove. It's like a little smaller than my RV, but they're working for themselves and on the freaking beach. So Mark, thank you so much for joining, uh, uh, the friendlies club. Welcome. So, uh, you should be able to see some content some that uh that is only available so take a look around the toppings are totally what make the taco yes 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 very very good so i know i need new glasses i wish you could see how foggy they're scratched they're terrible so that's why i keep playing with them because i can't see out of them hi smooth skater 
And um, Sarah says, people are allowed to be creative and make it work. In America, only people with deep pockets in a lot of industries can be successful. Totally. Exactly. Exactly. And the hoops you have to jump through. I mean, if you want to open a restaurant, oh my God, what do you think the base cost of opening a restaurant anywhere in the United States is? With the permits and the health inspections and, and none of us have been sick. Let's also point put that out. I don't know what their health regulations here or inspections are, if they have a health department here, but we've not been sick. Actually, Sarah had something, and you're going to have to watch that on their channel Saturday on that R at that RV over there. Um, uh, Sarah had a health issue there. I think you should be able to click on that. 20K, easy. Exactly. Exactly. And it seems... It seems, and again, we don't know, but it seems red tape is ridiculous. It is. Why? And why do we have so much red tape? Why? Why? You want to talk about a nanny state? That's one thing I've been thinking, too, is like so many people in the middle of the country in the South call California a nanny state because everything is regulated. Well, come to Mexico and you'll realize the entire United States is a nanny state. The entire United States. Here's a fun fact. Abortion is legal in Mexico. Extremely Catholic country. Abortion is legal everywhere. Mm -hmm. Extremely LGBTQ friendly. Yeah. So you want to talk about a nanny state. <laughs> Gotta go. Bye, Cart C. Blanton. Gotta go. Have fun and enjoy Baja. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Yeah, Ireland too. So thanks again, C. Blanton. People also feed their neighbors, don't want to make them sick. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, people would assume, I think a lot of Americans would assume that less regulate... Yeah, I guess that that's your point. That people would assume though that less regulations mean dirty and disease and bacteria. Whereas here, the social construct, the social or the social code is I'm making food for my neighbors. <laughs> and we don't need laws to tell us to not poison our food or to keep things clean. I think that's that whole moral thing. It's like, do we really need all these laws to keep us moral or are we just moral people? Hmm. Something else to think about. That's right. We are. And everybody knows America is one of the most litigious countries, if not the most litigious countries on the planet. And uh, yeah. So, yep. You got to watch out. Hi, Paula in Freitag in Sacramento. Hi, Don Cook. Um, thinking about retiring in Mexico or Costa Rica. Any thoughts? Well, I don't know anything about Costa Rica. Uh, we are all I think it's safe to say seriously thinking about moving here. So uh, a lot of Americans here, a lot of Americans, a lot of Canadians, tons of expats here, some of who live here year round. But uh, I would say I would. Here's what I would say. If you haven't already, go spend some time there. Don't retire somewhere um, without spending time there. And I'm not talking about a week or two, but you know, go down, spend several months in the place, get to know the area, get to know the people, um, the rules and regulations and customs before you make a decision like that. But yeah, I think it's a good idea. Uh, thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. Good to see you. Glad you made it. People probably think America is how it's portrayed in our exported entertainment. Absolutely. And it's all part of the selling the American dream, right? We export Hollywood and that's what everybody thinks America is. So until they meet me, <laughs> nah, ain't no Hollywood. All right. All right. I'm in Oaxaca for over two years. Oh, really? Oh, that's fascinating because when I hear about how dangerous Mexico is, Oaxaca is one of the countries, one of the states, states is that always comes up. Like there's a lot of bad stuff in Oaxaca. I, we were just talking about that because I actually dated a guy from Oaxaca uh, in college. Wow. And you've been there for two years and you love it. I would love to go there too. All right. Anything else you want to know? 
any i do have a couple let me see did i cover oh let me talk about the dogs let's talk about dogs in mexico shall we so one of the things i did talk a little bit about how they run free and how this society seems to be less human centric and care more about other living beings than americans seem to do other living beings and their well-being sadie it's just it just amazes me everybody wants sadie to be like uh, chained up all the time but uh so i feel like this is a really important thing to address we when we first got here we were tr san felipe uh Bahia de Los Angeles. I mean, we we went to a lot of towns. We encountered a lot of dogs. They were all super chill, super friendly, uh, came right up. Sadie played with them. I will say, though, that that is not the case all over the place. We did have an encounter with a dog in, um, where was that? What was that town? It wasn't Mulahay, was it? The beach town. What, Sarah, where was the beach camp? I don't even know where we've been now. Santa Rosalia? No. Anyway, we were in a town somewhere in Baja, and we were camping on the beach, and um, Sadie and I went for a walk one morning, and we walked down the... the, the it wasn't a trail. It's kind of hard to explain, but we walked down, and Sadie's with me, and she's off leash. It was Mulahay? Yeah, I guess it was. Oh, yes, it was. God, I'm like blanking on Mulahay right now. Uh, and I we we came around a corner and it was basically like a big dry lake bed we were on. And we were down here. And the ocean is over here. And the dry lake bed went down and around. And there were old like shacks that looked like they used to be inhabited. And it went down further. So Sadie and I are walking here. And there is a dog, a big dog right here guarding that area. And he stands up and he starts barking. And I could tell it was not a friendly bark. So I'm like, Sadie, come on, come on, come on. So she comes with me. And then two other dogs come in the other direction on either side of this big dog. And Sadie is curious because she's friendly and she's never met a dog that isn't friendly. And she's like going up and trying to sniff these dogs. So I'm like, Sadie, leave it. And... The other littler dogs didn't seem as threatening as the big dog who is still like coming at me, like with his teeth bared and Sadie runs away from the little dog. And I'm like, don't run, Sadie, stop, Sadie, come here. And the big dog is still approaching me, teeth bearing, and I'm yelling, go, and I'm trying to chase it away. And it's like staring me down, like it wants to take me on. And I finally get Sadie away. Uh, the, the dog backed off and the two little dogs went away. But by then two other dogs are coming over. I got Sadie under control and, uh, you know, she realized the dogs weren't friendly. And so she came over right to my side and we walked away. And there was a guy I noticed looking on the other end of the, the, the way. He came over, he walked toward our camp and he said those dogs have actually um, attacked other dogs and hurt them. And uh, so I was pretty lucky. And it was a really good lesson <laughs> in, you know, another lesson in my travels here in Baja that just because every dog that we had encountered was friendly doesn't mean every dog is friendly. And in fact, the town that we're in now, Sarah and Aaron had walked along the beach the first night we got here and they warned me there's a mangy dog up there and there's a dog that doesn't look very friendly. And so uh, when we went out to eat, I left Sadie inside and I didn't walk that way. So... Uh, I just feel like that's important because I don't want to give anybody the false impression that you can let your dog go free everywhere and it's not going to be a problem because I do let, I give Sadie a ton of freedom and I know sometimes that comes with risk. If she could have gotten hurt. That dog could have hurt her. Uh, but what's the alternative? To keep her on a leash all the time? Because I don't know. I mean, she's lived four years off leash and we had, you know, one, literally this one incident, one incident in four years. So, um, just want to make you aware of that. I also saw on a, a Baja Facebook group, I think that's where it was, that there are packs of dogs that run around like La Paz. So the big cities, I think, would be especially difficult and dangerous. So I would probably either keep Sadie on a leash or not walk in those areas. But 
Uh, I just wanted to say that because I've been all like, oh, it's so cool and so friendly and Sadie's so free and Sadie's, you know, she's not in any harm's way or anything. And, and that has changed a little bit. So I just wanted, I wanted to, I feel a responsibility to let you know that in case you come here. Um, true, Cheryl, that's a great question. It can, I mean, that's a great point. It can happen anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good point. It can happen anywhere. And, you know, as much as we travel and as much freedom as she has, that's the only time it's ever happened, but you're right. It can happen anywhere. And I recognized it right off the, right off the bat. I recognized it. We were 20 yards away from the dog and I saw him get up and start barking. Then I knew that was a territorial bark. I knew it. So that's the other thing. What do I always say? Be aware of your surroundings. If I had walked into that going, Oh, nice doggy and being a, you know, totally naive about it. It could have ended up worse for both of us, but I was on guard immediately. I knew it was a territorial bark. I knew he was guarding that territory and I immediately tried to get Sadie under control, which 99% of the time she's under control. I mean, Sarah and Aaron and Ralph have seen how, how well behaved she is the other day. She was out uh, digging a hole and I said, C-O-M-E, she's right here. So I said, C-O-M-E and she came and then I was like, okay, be free. And she's, and she starts running back and I say, come. And she stopped dead and came. So her, she 99.9% .9 of the time, but in this case, she's not used to mean dogs and it wasn't the mean mean dog that was coming toward her it was the more friendly dogs and but she it didn't take her long to realize they were up more enough to any good and they came she came to my side so oh thank you nancy thank you nancy yeah we need to get some thumbs up we have 380 people watching thank you all so much for being here i really appreciate it and we've got 253 thumbs up. So right down below the video, you can see the little thumbs up icon. So we've got 253. Can I get 260? There we go. Come on, 260. Really? Just 254 of you are going to give me a thumbs up? That's it? No more? Oh, somebody got mad that I'm asking for thumbs up and they're leaving. <laughs> All right. Um... <laughs> why am i bashing the u.s you know what i'm going to address that so thank you to our moderators thank you thank you thank you melissa so sandy jasson says i'm bashing the u.s what do you guys think what do you guys think you know i actually did a little talk on a walk yesterday and this is gonna um this, this whole conversation about bashing the u.s is going to come up in a video soon but let me address that how healthy is your marriage if you think everything is a perfect 100% of the time, if you run around saying, I have the best marriage, I have the best husband, he's perfect, nothing is ever wrong in our marriage, we have the best marriage. I mean, I know Sarah and Aaron do that. <laughs> How healthy is that marriage? You think that's a healthy marriage? Running around talking about how perfect that's not healthy. I believe pointing out, being aware of our faults is what makes us better. I don't think I'm perfect. I don't sit here saying I'm perfect and I can't improve and I can't, I don't need to change. I'm, I'm fine the way I am. That's unhealthy. Anybody who looks at the United States and says it's fine the way it is and it doesn't need any improvement is not healthy. That is not a healthy relationship. I talk about the United States and our shortcomings in an effort to shed light on what we can do better. Period. If you think that's bashing, then that's an unhealthy way of looking at the world. How it's not bashing. It's being realistic about the areas that we can improve upon. Period. That's right, Charlene. Marriage is becoming old and we need new realities. Yep. Yep. It's like there's this new thing called toxic positivity and I, I freaking hate it. There is nothing 
healthy about being positive all the time. There is nothing healthy about, oh, just get over it. Oh, you should be, oh, happy all the time. Just chant and you'll be happy. <laughs> it's bullshit. Nothing is perfect. You can't be happy 100% of the time. And anybody who tells you otherwise is crazy. So I'm not bashing the U.S. I am simply pointing out areas where we need a lot of work. Period. So thank you for that question. <laughs> Rose tinted glasses. Nancy's here. Hi, Nancy. I'm with you, Carolyn. The only way we grow is to take responsibility for our mistakes and learn from them. Absolutely. And, you know, um, uh, thank you, Smooth Skater, for the super chat. Comparing U.S. to Mexico is no big deal. I think that's probably what's triggering her, right? Um, but wait, I want to get back to what Nancy said. The only way to grow is to take responsibility for our mistakes. The, that is the same mindset that is telling people you can't teach slavery. That is the same mindset that's saying that by teaching how we have wronged Native Americans, Black Americans, other Chinese, Amer Chinese period, and Chinese Americans in this country, those are the same people who are saying like that, that talking about all the ways we have wronged and the real history of this country is making white people feel guilty or it's only to make white people feel guilty or it's, it's white racism. That's that's the result of this kind of thinking. It's not bashing, it's reality. And when we start call, using words like bashing, then we're more prone to want to bury our truth. And what good ever comes from burying your truth? Name one good thing that's ever come from burying a truth. All right. Seriously. All right. <laughs> Tammy almost ha inhaled your coffee. Oh, hi, Kay Kennedy. I'm glad you're here, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Tammy snorted my coffee. Oh, my goodness. Oh, bam, bam. Thank you so much. People in this country can't handle the truth. Apparently not. And it's it's tragic. It's really tragic, but I, I wonder if that's part of what is triggering is that I'm pointing out positive things about a country that so many of our Americans want to hate, a people, a people that so many in our country want to hate. Because if you hate the people here, then it's easier to tell them no. If you make, if you otherize them, right, if you make them monsters and criminals and rapists and they're all gangs and cartels, then it's easier to say, no, you can't, we don't want to help you. But when you humanize them, and I think maybe that's what Sarah and Aaron and I have really been trying to do in our videos, humanize the people here. It makes it a lot harder to have a war at the border, doesn't it? Because they're fucking human. They're people. Oh, Nancy, thank you for the super chat. It's so good to see you. I know you have a busy life and you can't always make it. So it's good to see you. Always such good to see you. Is anybody else having problems hearing me or does Catherine need to turn up her volume? Because I don't have a mic. I'm talking on my phone. Pointing out the truth. That's a novel idea. I know, isn't it? Everybody can hear me. So if you can't hear me, whoever told me to turn up my mic, maybe turn up your volume. Volume is fine. Thank you. I mean, and I'm talking, screaming. Aaron and Sarah can probably hear me from their RV. <laughs> <laughs> yep yep and what's what's rule number one of fascism rule number one from the playbook of of becoming a fascist country otherize otherize a, a people so that you have a strong man who is the only one who can save you from those horrible people who are stealing your country vermin Mm hmm Straight out of the fascist dictator playbook. So please stop buying into that bullshit. I'm not bashing. I'm speaking honestly. There's a difference. So 
scapegoat. That's right, a scapegoat, right? And right now it's trans youth who are committing suicide and brown people at the border. Nobody cares about all the Canadians. <laughs> There's nothing but Canadians down here. Nobody ever bitches about all the Canadians in our country. <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> we like giving him a hard time. But, all right. All right. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to... Um, thank you all so much for the super chats. Did I thank everybody? I hope I didn't miss anybody. Hi, Nancy. Thank you so much. And Smooth Skater, thank you. I'm going to go through again, just make sure I didn't miss anybody on the lot, on the Super Chats. It's really sweet of you. Uh, Mark Hutchinson is a new member. Oh, it's not letting me go all the way. I think I got everybody. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Did I have anything else I want to cover? Oh, one other reality of Baja that is probably going to come up in a video so when you don't invest in infrastructure and you don't invest in the people, uh, you have some unfortunate side effects to that. And one of the unfortunate side effects is that they burn their garbage. So, you know, we have extensive complex landfills, you know, they cover them up with dirt. They literally put everything, in, I know poor Ralph, <laughs> um, he can handle it. He's a good guy. We miss him, but they literally like, I think just put everything in a pile in their dumps, tires, it smells like plastic, everything, and just set it on fire. The first time we saw it, we were camped outside Guerrero Negro. And I think Era and Saren have it in one of their videos, this plume of black smoke coming up. And uh, it seems like somewhere else we smelled it too. And then the stench, it's so bad, all that toxic icky stuff burning i mean not only is it bad for mexico it's bad for the world but this is what happens when you don't um invest in infrastructure and you know things like garbage removal and and waste disposal so that's another side effect we were actually uh camped somewhere um and we smelled it for like two days and we finally had to leave. We were like, we can't, I mean, it was disgusting. It was so bad and it was chemically. And yeah, so that's another unfortunate side effect of being here is that they burn their garbage and it stinks up for miles and miles. All right. Be my lungs. Yeah. Sarah and I, we woke up in the morning, we were leaving and you know, we went for a walk and I was like, or no, actually we were pulling out and I think we were on the walkies or yelling at each other through the window or something. And it was just like, she's like, I closed my windows and I kept waking up in the middle of the night. It was bad. It's really bad. Um, Kennedy, Kay Kennedy. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. The tan. At least I got something going for me because I'm eating like crap and I'm looking forward to actually getting back into my routine of my vegan diet and hopefully eating better. I mean, I've been eating bakery stuff and bread. I've, I've probably put on at least 10 pounds since I've been here eating a lot of stuff I'm not used to and I'm not feeling very good. So thank you. I appreciate that. Um, going to need to work on that. Um, but thank you, Kay. That was really nice. Yeah, see, that's right. Not everything is perfect in Mexico. And I feel like, you know, it, it, it took us some time to live here and to start uh, really understanding the country and the culture. Oh, my God. Apple cider donuts, Richard. Oh, my gosh. I'm hoping to kind of come up and see you this summer. I've been thinking about it. So, yeah, maybe you can show me the best apple cider donuts. Yeah, don't even get me started. Actually, I'm not going to be there in the fall, though. But anyway, yeah. Uh. Oh, you have a neighbor who burns electric wires. I'm not planning any more hikes right now. Yeah, Richard. Okay, cool. Um, no, I'm my, I, I'm maybe if I lose some weight, my knees will get better. Um, because I have put on a lot of weight since I hiked the PCT even last time. And, and, uh, when I did that hike with Edie coming downhill, my knees were a mess. So, you got to remember, I mean, I hiked 576 miles on the PCT, 276 on the JMT. I mean, I probably hiked a thousands of miles 
backpacking with 40 to 50 pounds on my back and it has taken a toll on my on my knees plus my weight and I've got arthritis kicking in too so uh I don't know I don't know if any long hikes are are in my future unfortunately maybe some shorter ones all right oh my god Sarah apple cider donuts are so good Actually, they're hit and miss. I have, I've had some not so good ones, but most of them have been good. Oh, I forgot to tell you about the worst meal we had. Do you want to hear about the worst meal we've had? Bye, S. Benjamin. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you spending some, some of your night with me. Okay. The worst meal we had was a, a little community that we camped in. Uh, I think it's coming up in both our channels on Sunday. And everything is American here. There are more Americans here than Mexicans, I think. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, man. Americans and Canadians. And uh, there, there's an RV park and a couple RV parks in the area. And every American we met said, oh, you have to go to this restaurant. You have, this is the best restaurant in town and you have to go to this restaurant. Well, in the meantime, Sarah and Aaron and Ralph found a different restaurant that was authentic and, 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 you know, the family who owned it doesn't speak really a lot of English and it's very authentic Mexican food and it's inexpensive and they ranted and raved about it, but they had already been there. And so the night we were all going out to dinner, they wanted to, we all decided to go to the place that the Mexicans, I mean, that the Americans recommended. I don't even remember what I had. It was, it wasn't good. And the reason it wasn't good is because everything was Americanized. They were, tr they were catering to an American audience. Interesting at least that when I was in the restaurant and I think Sarah and Aaron said too, there weren't Americans in the other restaurant, but every, we were, while we had dinner there, every American we met in the two days we were there came through and had dinner there. And, um, and it just wasn't good. It wasn't authentic. It was just like trying to be what they think every American wants. And it was a real disappointment. I, um, I don't remember. Oh, Sarah had coconut shrimp and she didn't even touch it. I don't even think she like didn't even eat it. I thought I had fajitas, Aaron's. So I was thinking about that today and I don't even remember them. I think they had no spice on them. Do you re And I'm like, I don't even remember them. That's how awful they were. Like, how can you go wrong in fajitas? Oh, and they gave us garlic bread instead of tortillas. <laughs> fajitas with garlic bread instead of tortillas. It was weird. Every single person who stays at that RV park was like, you got to go there. It's the best. And it wasn't. It was the worst. The worst meal we've had in Baja. Oh, Sarah ate one coconut shrimp. I didn't think you ate any of them. I just kept looking at your plate. It was like, it's just going to sit there untouched. It didn't look good. You know what was good, though? The salsa was good and the guacamole like that they brought to our table. Those two things were very good. But unfortunately, everything else was not. Were the margaritas good? I think you guys said the margaritas were good. But. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron said I had fajitas. All right. All right. I'm going to start wrapping up. Any last minute burning questions before I go? Oh, my God. I love apple fritters. Stop. <laughs> Okay, the margaritas were good. The R margs. All right, any questions? Oh, yeah, and soup. The soup was really good. Sounds like Tammy's like, it sounds like a whole bunch of nope. Yeah, don't go there. It will be making videos. It'll be in video because I don't remember the name of it. It was nice seeing you live. Nancy, thank you, Nancy. I thank you so much for joining me. It was really nice of you to join me. Have a great night. Dana, I don't think I said hi to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Good to see you. See you on the Sunday video. Yes. The Feral Female Society. <laughs> so uh, I love that. And um, it's funny, that word feral has been coming up a lot lately. I don't ever plan my lives. I don't ever, ever plan my live streams. I just always do them. So I'm sorry I can't give you... I'll probably do one when I... Uh, wrap up my last Baja video, which will probably be about, I don't know, a month and a half, maybe month, month and a half. How long are we staying? We don't know. We don't know. Are we going to head to the ocean again? Well, we're at the ocean. We're at the Pacific Ocean. 
That'll come soon. Apple Hill in California. Oh, yeah, I know Apple Hill. I know Apple Hill very well. Pollock Pines. My ex-husband and I wanted to retire in Pollock Pines. That was our dream. Hi, Jane Johnson. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Um, blasphemy on the garlic bread and nor tortillas. A serious garlic bread at a Mexican restaurant. Uh, thank you for being here, Solzai. Solzai. Cheryl, thank you for being here. Tracy, thank you for being here. Um, thank you, Smooth Skater. Thank you, Mark, for being here. And Amanda and Bam Bam Pebbles and Sandra, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for the super chats. Uh, Aspen, how long do you have to be away before you qualify to come back up for another 180 days? So it's 180 days in a year. So 180 days in a year. So you can only be here six months in any year. So does that answer your question? Thank you very much for uh, spending some of your night with me, Denise. I appreciate it. And thank you, Joyce. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Hey, Richard. Good to see you. <laughs> and Pam. <laughs> uh, good to see you. They were blasting country music. Oh, my God. That's right. That restaurant was blasting country music, too. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Tammy. Thank you for listening. Cheryl says three months, I think. Well, I was just doing the research, and it's 160 days in a year. So that would mean six months. But, yeah, maybe maybe uh, take a look. Uh, Kay Kennedy, I'm glad I caught you. Even if it was late, I'll replay. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you all so much. I really appreciate you being here. I appreciate your excitement about this adventure. A lot of you have noticed how happy I have been. And part of that is just I'm on a new adventure, which is what I thrive on. I, I, I live for adventure. I think I've told you guys before that part of my recovery from drugs and alcohol was realizing that I need healthy adventures and healthy risks in order to feed my, my, my soul. And, uh, and that's part of what keeps me happy and sane. So this has been a wonderful trip. So the adventure is part of what's making me happy and being with this wonderful, amazing, beautiful group of people, uh, has just been, uh, you know, I mean, for me to come out of my hermitude, <laughs> my seclusion after seven years alone on the road. I couldn't have chose a better group of people to do it with. It's been amazing. So that's also been making me very happy. You know, turns out I'm not that introverted when I'm with the right people. I can be very extroverted and it's just been a lot of fun and I'm just feeling energized and not drained. So it's been pretty amazing. It's been a great experience all the way around and we're looking forward to doing it again. And I'm really grateful that you are all on this journey with me and uh, loving the videos as much as I'm loving living them and making them. And uh, we'll see you Sunday night. I have a, I've got a lot more work to do on Sunday night's video, but I think you're going to really enjoy it. There's some beautiful scenery and uh, some kind of fun things and some kind of surprising things. And so there's a lot coming up. And don't forget to check out Sarah and Aaron's channel too, if you haven't already at that RV over there. All right. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you Sunday. In the meantime, be happy, be free and be kind. Mwah, 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 mwah. Bye. Thanks for the super chats. Wait. And wait, and thank you to the moderators. <laughs> thank you, moderators. I appreciate you. You did a great job. And thank you for all the super chats. Bye. Bye.